Smells like organs. Not organ. Smells like organs. Should be up here on the right, coming out. Mr. Liver King pants. Cool neighborhood. Looks fit for a king. I'm trying to figure out which duplex is, uh, which duplex Liver King lives in here. Or apartment, I should say. It must be this guy. Yeah, Liver King right there, it says it. Oh, it says it out here? No, it doesn't say it, but. Oh. It has a shield. Yeah, let's see his uh, family. Is this his family shield? Look at that. Strength, truth, mastery. Looks a little familiar. Like it looks like he. Uh, it looks like I've seen some videos of this, some of this stuff before. Maybe these little woodsy areas over here. Chucking around a spear, running around, doing Liver King like shit. Looks like there's a couple homes back here. There's a barn. There's uh, something being built that looks kind of cool. Some of the vehicles out here. Pretty sick vehicles up there. Going in to meet the Liver King. <laughs> hey! I said, don't let him in. Don't fucking let him in. Looking jacked and tan. It's good to, to see you. Finally. Great to meet you. I can't believe how long this took. I know, it took a while, right? What's up, my man? How, how are you? How you doing, buddy? Chris. Great hey, to very nice to meet you, man. You. Oh, my God. You know, Did you know I was joking when I was like... Oh, we were messing around a lot, yeah. Okay, because I was like, he can only come if he has a high total. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, you know, the, you know I know you know. That's why I wrote back to you. I was like, get that fuck out of here, basically. And, and, and the, this is like one of my interview questions. I ask everybody. That's great. Is what's your fucking total? All right. And ho I hope we can talk more about that from like a philosophical standpoint. Oh, but I'm like, something. You know, if, if somebody's got a decent total, Oh, but I wrote back. I said he deadlifted 735 for two reps, right? Yeah, almost like, everyone I asked that question to has a... Hey, Liver Queen. How, How are you? Doing? Great to meet you. Are you? I'm Mark. Mark. Chris. Okay, Mark and I'm Chris. Chris. Right? How you doing? Yeah. How you doing, Chris? Good. I'm filming, but I'm oh. I'm over here doing, <laughs> doing, yeah. doing what I do. Any content we get, we'll, we'll give for to you. Sure. Give, give to you guys. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, I think that this may be one of the most excited get-togethers. Yeah, right? we're really excited. I don't even, like, I don't even know them, but I want to meet well, them. Well, I'm super excited, too, because I don't... A lot of the content that comes from you is from you. It's from you and your team, right? And you've been on a podcast or two here and there. Yeah. But, like, we want to kind of uncover. We want to show what's in the Liver King's cabinet. What's under his bed, if there even isn't under his bed. There's no <laughs> under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> two by fours. Yeah, that's right. right. That's right. Like, oh, look what we found here. We found some liver. <laughs> uh, look what we found over here, some testicles. <laughs> That's right. Wow. Well, as soon as we walk in, this is yeah. uh, something that we always try and um, greet everybody with is some of my favorite things. Awesome. Some of my favorite things. So uh, we had Liver King Chef get together. Uh, well, I don't know if it's ready, but we're going to get down on yeah, some Yeah, go ahead. Get ahead. Welcome. I know that. Liver King Chef! You, I know you've already had raw liver before. Oh, I have. Yes, I have. And uh, you ever had raw testicle before? Sounds good. I'm down. You down for doing yeah. it? Cheers? Yeah, for sure. All right, let's, yeah. What do you want to start with? Get rid of my gum. This is actually almost perfect like this because it's partially frozen, so the texture is going to be great. Partially frozen testes? Yeah. This Cheers. is a, true, a real test of a man. <laughs> so this is going to make my balls drop right here on the spot, right? Drop, double the fucking size, you name it. You, everything. Wow. <laughs> it's just like I thought it was going to be. Which is very manly. <laughs> Which one is the testicle? This one? This guy. Uh, it's, actually, it's actually... Uh, it looks like a piece of banana. It's not offensive. It it's it, not it, at all, it, right? It's like a term. It's not offensive. Like, liver has a back note to it that's like... Hey. <laughs> like, it tells you that it's here. But those testicles are fantastic. I'm glad you shaved them for me. I appreciate that. I didn't shave them for you. See, to me, this, this is sweet. I love the sweet. You start sweet. to get used to the flavor of that. Yeah. Well, and then everyone's a little bit different, right? If it's been frozen for a long time, if it's not that fresh, there's less glucose, right, in, mm -hmm. in the organ, or less glycogen, I should say. It gets to be like slippery, too, and weird texture, right? It starts to fall. Yep. Well, you know, it's funny, we do like a couple well, of interviews. Since I listened to you on, uh, I think it was Logan Paul's podcast. I've, I've messed, he and I have messed with liver 
Yeah. We've, we've been doing a The Logan Paul podcast was awesome. Yeah, yeah excellent. Like a lot. Yeah. Badass. Me too. It was very free flowing and it gave me an opportunity to like learn more about you. I thought I learned a lot. This well, you know, and with Paul being my friend, you know, like, I'll just tell you guys, like I said, I'm, and I, you may have heard this on the Logan Paul podcast, but like, I, I said I was never doing a podcast. <laughs> I was never going to be the guy right. to be the face of anything. Or to do any social media and all that. Yeah, That's right. That. And so, you know, Paul basically said, you have an obligation, you know, and then Paul said, Paul goes, hey, man, come on my fucking podcast and whatever you don't like, we'll edit out. So I'm talking to him, right? And I didn't like what I said. I go, hey, man, edit that shit out. Let's redo it. Hey man, edit that. if we could just do a, a like a whole thing of all the edits, <laughs> and so that was it. Like you know, Paul's my buddy, and so to cool. to be able to do that with Paul was just was just a ball. What I'm gonna say is you, uh, you've known him for quite a while, right? I oh. have. Yeah, I'm well, say it was just super encouraging because you just kept kept hitting that mark of eat liver, eat liver, eat liver. You kept going back to it, and I was like, you know what? I ate liver a while ago, but I was kind of a pussy about it. I'll just go back to it and like, yeah. I'm doing a cold plunge, I'm doing these other things, why not just commit to it like I did with powerlifting or anything else? So yeah. I'm like, well, let me do a bunch of days in a row of it. Now I come home and the first thing I eat is liver. I love it. I usually fast in the morning, it's more convenient for my day and stuff like that. And then yeah. we come home, is first thing I eat is raw liver and usually bone marrow. That's badass. Yeah. We'll get I'm so glad to be saying that. It. It's just to, for me. I don't know what it's doing it. for me yet. Like I don't have, but simultaneously my sleep started to get a little bit better and there's other things that I'm doing too to help my sleep so who knows but so far so good I would say you it's allowing you to express your highest and most dominant form yeah, you know hey, here's the thing when people are already doing a lot of shit right when you're already optimizing a lot of course the relative difference for you right is going to be a lot less perceptible than the average fucker that's coming in right. here I've had so many people come in here like that this lady with GQ um, the, the guys last yeah. week with, I don't know if I can say this, but we, we had a big one last week and none of the guys wanted to eat any of this stuff, mm -hmm. but how much you want to bet they needed it the most, they would have felt it the most, um, and all so I want to- even tried it though. That's correct. Yeah. That seems pretty, like, that's a good argument, right? Like, hey, that seems a little close, like, are you a close-minded person? Yeah. Like, you're not a close, like, come, just right, try it. Right. And then if you're grossed out by it, that's fine. You know what's funny, right? I don't know what y'all would do, but this is crazy. A couple of these really big interviews, and the first one I ever did, she was a vegan. <laughs> the one with GQ, she was a vegan. And I'm like, oh, this is gonna be a great unbiased interview. Right. right? And, and, and of course, I'm like, well, just remember this. We have nine ancestral tenants, eight of them are vegan friendly. We connect on this level, right? And I'm like, and are you eating it for ethical reasons, or is there something else? And, and she really, they believe that this is the best way for them to achieve their, their own, you know, idea of the, So I'm like, you know what? We, we believe in the same things in principle. Right. We just have a drastically divergent way of thinking about what you're supposed to eat. You know, so we talked a whole lot more about that. But I have mad respect for people that at least pick something and make an intentional choice about it. Yeah, yeah. Be, and why not be intense about it a little bit too, right? And fuck yeah! A long way. That's right, there that's was, right. Uh, there was one guy out of those groups that doesn't eat this. And we, he was like, let me try it. And then he said he, he felt like this euphoria, like this. Remember? This was a GQ like, group. Oh, I know it's bone marrow. But like, what is in there? Like, it to me, it just tastes like a big old blob of like, the fatty part of the ribeye that, that is a little bit more edible. You know, sometimes you get that chunk that's harder to chew on. Yeah. This tastes like, a, is this like saturated fat? Or Collagen. Oh, yeah, most of it right. is. You know, I, I can't tell you exactly how the fat composition breaks down, but what I try to tell everybody is like, um, sometimes the, every, someone will ask me, hey, so what's in liver? Right. <laughs> I'm like, listen, I can tell you about the Bunch riboflavin, of good stuff. I can tell you about the choline, <laughs> I can tell you about the heme iron, I can tell you about the peptides, like, like, uh, uh, uh leap, uh, there's, uh, there's leap, oh, fuck, what the fuck is it? I forget, it's, it's leap something, there's ergothionine, there's, but I can tell you that stuff, right? But how much, like, what do you actually know about that? Right. Right? Yeah, once you go a couple layers deep, then we all sound kind of foolish, because we're not scientists, so we don't care about that. Thing. So this is what I try and tell people, what you really need to know is that alpha organisms eat like that, right? right? The, the ultimate predator of the ocean, the killer whale, they go for the liver. They rip open a fucking great white and they go for the liver first. You already know this about lions. You know, oh, primitive yeah, day uh, uh, tribes go for the liver first. Mm. And, uh, and this one tribe we were with, they gave me the foot and with the claws and everything. Mm. I'm like, why are you giving me this? And they're showing me the bones. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm, I don't even know if this is fucking edible. <laughs> it was, it was edible. Right. 
it was edible, but they're, they're trying to get the marrow first. And so the liver and the bone marrow, what I would say is like, you know what, um, if, if alpha organisms do this, I'm going to do this too. Yeah. You know, and, and I, again, I don't know the research. Like I always say, I got Paul Saladino for you. You want to know the fucking science behind it? Yeah. I'm the guy who, who's like from an anthropological standpoint, from a first principle standpoint, if this makes sense, I'm going to give this I to actually that. find that more interesting because when we, when we as a people were doing that stuff, nobody knew why they were eating, you know, why they were eating the organs, why they were, you know, they just knew it was good for you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That, that's all they needed to know. Right? Yeah. We're going to go with three of these together. Ready? We got this. Well, we got the marrow, the testicles, the semen, and <laughs> get some of that blood in there. Gush that around a little bit. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Cheers. Uh, we you don't mind if I put it now, do you? No, open it up. We just loaded up. We can send you a bunch look of stuff, how, too. Look how fat this guy is. These <laughs> giant lumps right here. That's body fat. This, this is a shirt. not supposed to look that way. That's a shirt. Those are everyday knee sleeves just, that are just good for a lot of the wrist wraps. A lot of the barbarian and stuff you do. Okay, so I, I've never tried oh, you're gonna anything it. like this. You're going to love it. How come? Why do you think so? Well, we'll show it, it to you. It just allows you to get more weight. And, I mean, <laughs> I've seen so many people yeah. try it. A little bit like a lifting belt for your upper body. Badass. I can't wait to try it. Thank you guys. Got some wrist you're wraps. Lover, you're a lover of the bench press. I do like bench press. Have you ever tried Kratom? That's no. What, that's, what, that's what this is. That's a plant. That's a plant that'll make you feel euphoric. It's amazing. It's What's incredible. actually in it? Kratom. It it's, a, it's a tea leaf. And that's fasting gum that we make that has, uh, has a little bit of caffeine in it and has like two other things kind of help you. That's food. clever. A lot of people do fat. You know, Man, nobody food. comes in here bringing me presents, know, right? Oh my God. Oh yeah. Oh, those are handles for um, cable bag crossovers bag. and stuff that are stretchy. So we Thank use... Mark used the slingshot material on the oh, on those, so they're. Oh, look at that! Oh wow! Oh nice! They feel really cool. They feel really smooth when I you're bet. doing uh, different chest work, and then I think we put a tri. Did, did we throw a tricep one in there too? I think there's one more in there. Yeah, a tricep like strap. A never ending bag. Of How much stuff did you bring? I gave him the whole company. You said bring the liver king a bunch of shit, and I'm like, okay. I just got really excited. Actually. Now there's more stuff we have to bring on every trip. <laughs> So that's actually really cool too. That's a tricep push down strap yeah. basically. Oh, yeah. And it has a little a little bounce to it, you know, just to give you a little more. It's something different. Yeah. A little bit different, right? Yeah. You know, um, Louis Simmons' philosophy about the biological law of combination. Yeah. You know, I, I try to apply like all aspects of my life. Mm -hmm. Of course it makes sense physically, but how many people really apply that socially, emotionally, and right. spiritually? And of course in the gym, the smallest little tweaks, having something like this. The, the, just the grip is a little different. Yeah. The lower is a little different. And I'm always looking at how can you just change it ever so slightly. It's such a great principle to have with the max effort work with different grips and different uh, different implements and everything. Because you apply that to life, just like you said, and you can feel like you're advancing every single day. Yeah. It just might be in something slightly different. Yeah. It's hard to just do the same thing all the time and get better at that, right? Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. yeah this, Thank this, you so this, much for yeah. the presence. Yeah. More plays and more days than on video. On me, I couldn't believe it. I didn't think it was bad. It was fine. I mean, at the end of the day, he's like, hey, listen, nobody knows. Right. Um, you know, gun to head, do hey, I think hey, so? Hey, don't that. bite my way. No, but at the end of the day, nobody knows. Right. Um, and, and then what ended up happening is, um, I want to say like uh, the day later, uh, we're out on the beach and uh, 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 Lane does I call one. Them, uh, <laughs> Lane does one. <laughs> and, and you know, I was like, oh my God, come look. Oh, come look, it, it happened again. And this guy again, nobody knows. Just like a month or two ago? Or no, the, this was no, this was last year. The, uh, this is as soon as we launched social media. Yeah. These two guys who already have followings, right. this guy has nobody, needs these guys to right. become somebody. Right. I don't care what they say about me. Right. And now, you know, I could, I'm so happy. I'm sure I'm on cloud fucking nine. Right. And then Lane saying all this, yeah, it's not really nice stuff. Like he's, he's mad. He's yeah. mad. Yeah. And, and she goes, if he could see us right now, because right now all we're doing is we're, we're in the most beautiful place in the world laughing our asses off, happy as hell. And we're like, we think he, he seems like he's a bit upset. Yeah. Because so we pictured him like this on the computer all bad and we're like cracking up, getting the sun and beautiful. <laughs> Just grateful as hell. Right. You know, and, and I, I think you have a similar mindset about this. Oh, you know, like at, at the end of the day, it's like what people are doing isn't working. 
You know, and we need each other. I need Lane, Lane needs me. Same with this other guy. Like, we need each other if we're really gonna make a difference. Like, if we unite, oh, sure. we can do something. So many people are so sick, right? Yeah. I think uh, what's, what's great about that is that I think a lot of people are trying to, it's an attempt to take you down sometimes. And it's an attempt to, I think somebody like Lane and some of these other guys, they've been in the field for a long time. Who's this new guy coming in? Who's this new guy giving information? And then they think it's misinformation, and then they go as far to say that you're only hustling, you're only trying to make money. How long have you had your Instagram for before you ever mentioned anything about a company? Because I don't remember seeing a lot of stuff where you were mentioning ancestral supplements specifically, right. especially on your Instagram. Yeah, that's not my thing. You know, it, it, it actually, this is funny. Like, I think you, I've seen a few posts more recently. Yeah, sometimes I'll put it on a story. Yeah. You know, every, every once in a while I'll put it but on a story. I thought it was really romantic, because I, I was also confused because when I asked people, I was like, does he even own, like what company does he own? Cause yeah. like, I don't like this guy, he's just trying to hustle, he's just trying to sell us on something. Yeah. And I'm like, but what is he trying to sell you? Do you even know? And they're like, well, I don't know, I don't like him. It's like, <laughs> you're not even giving me a reason. Everyone thinks, oh, it's coming. It's so, co and I, I get so many messages about that. Someone else created you, and I know that this is coming. <laughs> so like, you're gonna start promoting something, you know, that we haven't identified yet. And, and you know, like, what I'm prom promoting are these nine ancestral tunes. What I'm promoting is because your life fucking sucks. And, and the thing is, if you look at um, someone that- What do you mean by that? What, what I mean by that is- I know people, what you mean by that, but tell, tell us what you mean by that. Yeah, you, mo most people go to a job that they hate. Right. right. They come home to a life that they don't fucking love. They sedate themselves with enough Netflix, drugs, medication, alcohol, whatever to call it a fucking day. Right. And, and if you just look at these statistics, 80% of people are living paycheck to paycheck. They're struggling. We think that we're a status seeking society and we're gonna buy the status at the fucking mall and struggle paycheck to paycheck. 70% of us are overweight, right? Half are obese, half are morbidly obese. It's 50% of us are on prescription meds. It doesn't look like we're heading in a good direction. This is fucked up. One out of five kids this big is on prescription medicine, yeah. right? And so um, it's some That's sometimes- People ask me, scary. what do you tell people? How do you convince people? And I'm like, listen, your life already fucking sucks. We all know we're meant for more, right? We're wired for more, but, but right now, we, we don't really know what action is. So, so what I say is like, let's acknowledge that we have a fucking problem. And, the, and what I'm proposing is like this really simple, elegant way of being. The way we've lived for millions of fucking years. And it's something you can implement right now. And you'll feel right. the change. Most people feel the change tomorrow. Yeah, so th this is the thing, like when people start talking about when they're not asking for things that are that hard either. I mean, you're encouraging people to sleep. You're encouraging people to shut their Wi-Fi down at certain times of the day. Like, I don't. Okay, lifting might be a stretch for somebody that's not currently lifting, right? There's some things that might be. But you know what? I, 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 I parlay that into listen. If you're not going to go lift heavy shit, you can do push-ups before dinner. Yeah. I mean, today that this was mind. my message. Anyone can do this. And, and the reason why I'm really excited about this is there's this kid who ran across a Brooklyn Bridge when we were doing Barbarian. And he ran and he goes, I'm Saul, I'm Saul from Instagram. I'm this guy and I'm like, oh fuck, you know, I don't know. Who. But he goes, you know, he tells me a story. I lost 60 pounds, I stopped drinking alcohol. I'm now connecting with the outside world because I got this confidence. Long story short, I just did Barbarian. He goes, let's do a push-up competition, you and me right now. And I look at him and, I'm, and I, do, I, do, I judged him. I'm like, I could fucking murder you in a push-up competition. Yeah. But I just did Barbarian. Get the fuck out of here. Thank you for, sh anyways, um, he was so excited. He wouldn't stop leaving. And the bodyguards were like, hey, you want me to? And I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. This guy murdered me in a push-up competition. Oh, murdered me. He, and, he, and he goes, put that, put that on your Instagram. <laughs> and so I was like, yeah. I said, how, how did you do this? Yeah. And he said, because of you, I do push up before breakfast, before lunch, before dinner. Yeah. Max effort, I've been doing this for four to five months. Wow. And that's why he fucking did. And so that's when it occurred to me, yes, go into lift heavy shit can be tough for some people. Yeah. Everyone has access to do push ups or go carry a chair, go oh, carry a chair or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, anyways, yeah, it's like, you, you don't want to, um, if you actually looked at, uh, at our finances, how much you want to bet we're in a deeper fucking hole since we started social media? <laughs> you know, it, it's like it we cost a lot of money to put all that content out. And you know what? Uh, I, I know that I don't know shit about it, and so we we hire a team to really help us out with it. Just uh, for people out there listening, uh, depending on how far you go down that rabbit hole, I've I've paid over a quarter million quarter million dollars before 
for multiple years on end and paid even more than that before. So you can end up paying quite a bit just to get your message out. We're giving the message out and we're gonna, we're gonna continue to fight to get the message out. The message is going mainstream. Now people are paying attention. Right. So we're not gonna stop. All right, nice to meet you. Cooking up some meat in here. And the organs. You gotta meet the guys. Look at the TV room. I knew it. I knew all you did was sit here and watch. The, oh, yeah. <laughs> what? Watch the picture. Yeah. We actually do have a, a, a TV room. Kettlebell. Yeah. Kettlebell table what is that doing there? That's embarrassing. Kettlebell. You, you, you have that there for my. I told you to take this out of here. Come on, man. You know who these guys are. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Mark. I was absolutely worried about that. Great to meet you guys. Nice to meet you guys. and Striker. Striker. All right. And I'm Chris. Chris. How you doing? Dog, striker. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> his no. dog is named Striker. How old is his dog? His, his dog. I think his dog um, passed, but his dog was old, right? No, no. Striker's still, still around. around. Striker's got his own Instagram. Striker Probably Fitness like or Striker. 14, 13. Shit. Well, he, he's turned 16, so he got it from us. He got is it S T R Y? Yeah, S T R Y. That's his dog. Strikers World. If he's Strikers World, this is Instagram. Wow. wow. We were like, like, stand next to your dad over here. This is this is pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> he's got dad. Look at this guy. A good shot right there. I like and, that. Let me stand next to him. I got. I got. I, I'm cheating. I got. Oh, I'm wearing my shoes too. Oh yeah. I'm wearing my shoes too. Well, he's gonna pass everybody. Probably. And you know that this guy is oh, uh, the youngest all yeah. the time. He's the potato king. He called himself the potato king, but we call him the glute king. Because he's got these glutes, man. Glutes for days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Eat yeah. a lot of potatoes? Yeah. yeah. Besides, I'll make you strong. Besides the meat and all that stuff, hmm. the potatoes is, you know, it's like a plate of potatoes every it's, day. It's uh, America's number one source of vitamin C. Seriously? Because of French fries. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. You know, pe people ask me about that. They're like, hey, why do you do... Um, those potatoes and and you know what like if you have really 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 fresh meat um, You can taste the, the glycogen in the meat or the glucose in the blood when, when you're drinking blood Our early aunt, we've always consumed some source of sugar, right? And and then she's hundred percent Polish and with her background Stupid Polish. <laughs> We're Polish. We're part Polish. Are you? Oh, yeah. It's, it's oh, in our family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Aren't dumb enough to come here <laughs> Good stuff. You guys uh, want to show me where the pop tarts are? Cookies. <laughs> show show them the pantry. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, we're trying Come to expose them. We're trying to make them look bad. So yeah. I like it. Oh, we got pork rinds. I love pork rinds. And then um, when our friends come over, they can't always like eat the kind of food that we eat. So mm -hmm. we do have like a couple of uh, uh, healthier like snacks. Little, to share little snacky snack things. Yeah. How do you guys eat? You guys eat pretty much just like your dad? Yeah. Eating meat and eggs and... Not as much, but mm -hmm. it's pretty similar. Yeah. Well, he eats a lot, right? Yeah. He's do you like big. it? Hmm? Do you like it? Oh, the organs don't really taste good, but um, yeah, I know it's good for me. Yeah. Some of the benefits of it, yeah. Do your friends yeah. think it's weird or are they cool with it all? Um, they just don't want to try it if I ask them to, but they don't really think it's weird. They don't think it's weird. They're, they're cool with it? Yeah. yeah that's cool. I'm thinking if I push a button that there's going to be like a secret door and this is going to be like open up and it's going to have a bunch of Snickers bars and stuff. I don't think so. No, this is great. This looks good. What's in the liver of King Bar? We got a little freezer like, What is here. that made out of? We got um, some. I'm not sure. I think it's like some almond butter. Um, oh, okay. I forgot the other. Is that pretty good? Look at it. Yeah. Oh, here's what, what's here. in the liver King Bars? Liver King Bars is uh, courage, strength. <laughs> Honor, just as I thought. Um, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot. Those of are just the ingredients I've been looking for. <laughs> no, that there's ghee. There, there's different sources of protein in Very there, cool. but it is a high fat bar. Mm. It is a high fat bar, uh, but uh, hey, hey, we're not afraid of that. I would have cleaned it out. Primals need to know the Bell Brothers are in town, so there will be hell to pay, and by that I mean value to create. But a king has got to eat. So here is what Liver King is having for dinner today. I'm Liver King Chef Lionel, and here's what we made for dinner tonight. We're gonna have some caramelized smoked pork chops. We got some bone marrow, of course. We have some liver because liver is king. And who needs vegetables when you got testicles? To accompany everything, we have some vinegar braised pork chops, and then we also have some guacamole. We have our carbs. We have our liver, more liver, of course. And then we also have some burgers with cheese and our 
mashed sweet potatoes. That's what we're having tonight for dinner. Liver King Chef Lino, out. Liver King. If he's got a shredded six pack, then I'm not gonna have any potatoes. Let him have more potatoes then. Sir, <laughs> Sir Liver, Liver King, how did you uh, acquire your wealth originally? Because it looks like you've had some pretty good amount of money for quite some time. You got this beautiful ranch and I think yeah. we're staying at another location of yours later tonight. Yeah, you know, I just want to make it clear that, like, anybody who acquires wealth or resources, you know, it just makes you more of what you already are. And I'm sure you probably heard this, but if you're a big piece of shit asshole and you get wealthy, you just have more means to be a big piece of shit asshole. <laughs> right. right. And if you're a good dude, if you're a self made king and you create and shape a life, the exact life that you want to live in, you take real ownership and leadership over your life, you show them, don't tell them, you model that, and people will naturally follow you. Right, so I think that you gotta have that before you actually have resources. Because what I, what I would say life is really about is progression, right? Um, progression equals happiness. When you take on more responsibility and you progress physically, mentally, emotionally, socially, and, and spiritually, you progress that way and happiness, the growth mindset is a way to be. And so uh, one day she said, hey, I'm fucking done with dentistry. And she, yes. this is all, she trained over, I don't know, 10, 15 years to be a dentist. Mm -hmm. We started a, a vertically integrated business. I've always been an entrepreneur. And then we got sucked into this thing for over a fucking decade. And, and, and it wasn't horrific, but this was not my passion. This was not her passion. But, and so she goes, I'm done with it. She goes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna go raise yeah. these it's, guys. And that was the biggest thing. Missing out on their, you know, they were with babysitters, they were with mm. nannies, they were in school. And I was like, oh my God, you know, whoever says it's like, the, maybe for a man, the, qua the quality might be over quantity, mm. but for a woman, for a mom, it's definitely the quantity. Like, mm. you gotta be the kid. So. But here's the thing, it took her saying that, and, and it took me saying, holy fucking shit. I mean, we had so many millions of dollars. We, just, we had $5 million just in the building that we bought. Mm. that we we're way in over our head. Yeah. And then the equipment and the other businesses, we had an imaging center, we had a dental lab, we had 32 employees, we wow. had six associates that worked in every discipline of dentistry. We had, it was called Dentique Dentistry, a vertically integrated luxury dental office, which is actually still around and kicking some fucking ass, but man, we struggled with like, like motherfuckers to build it. So she goes, I'm done. And I'm thinking, holy shit, you know how many millions of dollars we owe? <laughs> What am I going to do? What am I going to do to rescue the family? You know, and, and so um, I started writing a book. I started writing a book on ketosis. It was called Above 0.5. <laughs> Above 0.5. But what, as I started writing more, I started realizing I'm going to actually write down everything I know mm. about sleep, eat, move, shield. I started writing down everything I know. And then when it got to eat, I said, hey, we can really, before we're done here, we can really help your patients. Right? Because mm. recurrent and chronic decaying dental issues... It's not about this oral hygiene hypothesis, right? Our early ancestors didn't brush, didn't floss, and didn't fucking get cavities. You chew it on hard stuff, <clears throat> develop their airway better, they sleep better, yeah. so forth. So that's it. It's, it's two things. It's the mechanical loading, right? You put somebody in a cast, they break the leg, you put them in a cast, you don't mechanically load that leg ever again, and that, that bone is gone, right? So you need mechanical loading, and you need the nourishment, predominantly the fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, K, and E, right? So um, we started to put together a supplement. It was called Tooth Restore. And she's talking to her patients about it. Nobody wants anything to do with it. Her associate, the surgeon, says, don't tell my patients about this. You're going to put me out of business. Yeah. <laughs> and and we're st we start thinking, fuck, man. Like, we got to figure out another way to bring this nourishment to market. And so the more I thought about it, the more I said, you know what? Nobody in the world is eating this way. And, and so I wonder if we can create a simple way. Because one way or another... We have to create access for people to eat nose and tail. And I don't know if you've heard me say this before, but um, this, is, this is our position is, if you can go on a hunt, go on a hunt and get the organs that way. But if you're not gonna do that, go to your butcher, go to your farmer's market, get to know somebody, look them in the eye. <clears throat> if you're not gonna do that, go to the fucking grocery store. If you're not gonna do that, I got a fucking capsule for you. I got a capsule for you. And, and this will at least put you in momentum and you'll feel the difference. Mm. One way or another, you gotta get it. And so we realized uh, we're pretty fucking good at, at building teams and building businesses. Well, it looks like you really pulled away people's excuses, which Mark always says to do. Mm -hmm. Like you took away their excuses like, hey, get to know somebody. If you don't know somebody, go to the store. If you don't go to the store, 
we have a supplement for you. Like it's it's every you can hit every level and you, you can, can help every them where they're at. You can help every person. I like what you said in the beginning because that's something I'm a big believer in too. Is that if you're going to be a success, if you're going to be successful, you have to first be a success. So it's a little bit of a mind, you know, it fucks with your mind a little bit because you're like, well, how do I get there? How do I how do I get there if I'm not successful? But mm-hmm. if you have the habits locked in, if you have the the day to day discipline locked in everything else will carry through. And I think a lot of times people are just looking at the end result and it's not the end result. Like if you're, somebody's trying to do a particular thing where they're trying to lose weight or have a body weight transformation, I don't think it should be a 30 day challenge to lose weight or a 60 day challenge to lose weight. It should be, I wanna see if I can follow one or two of these principles for a week. The next week goes by. I wanna see if I can add another thing for another week and maybe at the end of the month, maybe you did follow five or six things from somebody, but now you really accumulated something and now you're gonna turn yourself into somebody that has that discipline, that discipline becomes part of your character and then it's your go-to. Instead of drinking, you go and punch a heavy bag. Yeah. yeah. Instead of smoking weed, you go and throw around some kettlebells. Yeah, and you have even more satiation. You're even more fulfilled and you're making real progress in life that equals real happiness, which is a hell of a lot more sustainable it's um, people ask me about like being an entrepreneur and one of the first things I tell them about is go learn go start eating liver and learn what the barbarian is go do the barbarian because if you're gonna scale and lead a team you better fucking know how to lead yourself and you have all these people including myself I was one of them I didn't know how to lead myself when I was trying to lead a team and that might be why we struggled for you're talking about Brian that yeah, Brian, Brian Johnson. my <laughs> predecessor and yeah. somebody today where is he at today <laughs> I sent an old picture, a young bride picture to uh, 1DS, and, uh, and somebody goes, holy fucking shit, is that Liver King? And I go, fuck no, that's his predecessor. That's Brian. <laughs> they loved it. So eating, I just think it's really important. We're, we're on just one of the nine ancestral tenants. All of these things, they mean something epigenetically. They all signal to us something. Mm-hmm. Right? <clears throat> when I get to tell my story, when, when people ask me um, if I'm taking whatever, right? I like to joke around and say, yeah, I take a heavy dose of PEDs. Right. I'm sure you've already heard this. It's prioritize, execute, and fucking dominate in life. I take a heavy dose of PEDs every day. But when I get to talking about like, what I actually do, how long I've been lifting, I've been lifting for over 35 years. You know, and, and most of those years, we didn't take off a single day. Mm-hmm. And we were proud of this. We didn't take off Christmas. We didn't take off Thanksgiving. You remember the gyms would have like certain hours you could still go mm-hmm. and we would still go. And then the last half of those 35 years, I've been working out twice a day. I, I get about 12 to 14 workouts in a week. And then I also have these micro workouts I do. But what, so what I would like to like at least share is nobody, maybe you do, but I'm going to say this with confidence that I don't think you've met anybody that's worked out for such a long period of time with such intensity, with this kind of duration, with this kind of depth, this consistently. Um, I'll stand behind it. <laughs> Nobody looks at this guy. But, <laughs> but, 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 but you know, this is not the popular answer for people. And the truth is there's nine ancestral tenants and all I'm talking about is lifting. And you guys know this, if you sleep like shit, you're gonna tank your hormones. You can look at after a shitty night's sleep, your testosterone is almost in half. If you eat like shit chronically, same thing, your testosterone will be in half. If you move like shit, you don't lift heavy shit, you're not gonna optimize your testosterone. But everything, every ancestral tenon, if, if you can, uh, uh, or the fourth ancestral tenon is shield. If you keep, by the way, where are your cell phones? It's right here. I'm, it's on airplane mode. Well, it's, le- it's on airplane mode. Did but most people keep their phones <laughs> by their fucking dick and balls. It is by my dick and balls. So, the, so let's just pretend for a minute that why... Unless it's off. <laughs> let's pretend for a minute that like EMS or whatever, yeah, yeah. right? Um, it, it, there's still such thing as, uh, as ionizing radiation, which is the same reason they say don't keep it right on your fucking ear, but we're keeping it right on our dick and balls. Yeah, right. these young people. This is just one aspect of shield. I mean, we still have, we're wearing petrochemical clothing, xenoestrogen laden perfumes, and this is just the fourth ancestral tenant. There's nine of them that all affect what we epigenetically express, right? Imagine if you can optimize all these things, right. you're gonna see the highest version of yourself. Yeah. You're gonna see the highest version of yourself. So I just want to uh, put, put that back to you, Chris. I mean, eating is a big thing. Not eating and fasting, honoring the feast and famine cycle, big thing. You know, before I eat, I will never eat a single meal with actual, without earning it ahead of time. And at the very least, you ever do, either of you guys ever do tabata push-ups? Mm-hmm. It's a fucking beast, man. Oh, yeah. It's a beast. So let's just say like you're going to have a big dinner. You can't give three and a half, four minutes of tabata push-ups you know, I mean, you can really get to work doing that. 
if people just because our early actually, ancestors crushes you. Yeah. actually let, let me hear you say Rad. Um, you know it's, it's our Wednesday rest day message right you don't have to say the whole message but but why why is the message the Liver King philosophy what it is on Wednesdays oh because our early ancestors always have to put some kind of effort to get the animals in to eat and now we can just grab out of the fridge or make a call for pizza or something but our early ancestors always had to put effort by hunting by shooting or by carrying the animal back to the camp and, and this well, is crazy like why today is it okay that little king chef lionel presents this great meal and we don't honor the struggle of our early ancestors our, our own genetic fitness we can't give three or four minutes we went to a, a really fancy restaurant it was great because like the juxtaposition of us with the shirt off and everything with all these <laughs> fan fancy people and I'm like, okay, food's coming. I gotta get to fucking work because I, I hadn't gotten to work recently. Mm. I did get to work, you know, b before we ate this. But just remember, there's these nine ancestral tenants, and eat is one of the most nuanced of them all, right? So as as you are optimizing, just remember you you got so many levers to pull. I'm 100% convinced the the best fucking version of you, like the version where you start to really express, lean into your potential. Think of what you've done so far in life. Yeah. Think of how much more we can do when we start living our best fucking life. Like we're barely scratching the surface of what we can do. And this is the message we gotta share with the world because you know so, some of us are about optimizing, but most of the world is really fucking hurting, mm. is really suffering. And there's a simple fucking thing that they need to do. Do you get a lot of um, blowback from uh like the kids and, and like doing stuff like, I remember you did a um, thing where you guys went to like a museum and you guys were like, you know, they're like running up the steps or yeah. something, right? Yeah. And then I saw a couple Instagram posts after that where people were like, look at this guy. He's so mean to his kids. How yes. do you do that? Like, what do you, how do you deal with that kind well, of stuff? Well, let me first of all, tell you, CPS gets called on us all the time. Really? They, they come right here. We sit in this fucking room. We have a talk with them. They think it's hilarious because they see how they live. They ask them a few questions. Yes. You know, they come up. They're on the ninja course. They're, you know, I mean, they do most of what they need to do. But if anybody asks me, do you make your kids live this way? First of all, I'm going to say yes. Do they choose to do most of this? They do. But, you know, any parent, if you put a pile of liver or a pile of donuts, what's the yeah. kid going to choose? Right? You put a pile of video games or a pile of fucking hard work in the gym, what's the kid going to choose? Right? It's, yeah. it's the parent's job, you know, to affirm your kids with it. I get this is my only job as a parent is to affirm my kids with the depth of challenge, worth and potential so that they come to believe in themselves. You and can't expect to have strong kids if you have weak parents. Right? Oh, I mean, like, for sure. I mean, you know, it's what we show them. I always I say, say. I, I'm okay forcing them. I'm okay if they fucking hate me when we grow up, but they're not going to hate themselves. You know, they won't hate themselves because they'll be self made kings. They'll be, they'll know strength. And they'll know how to point what, what, what they were able to produce in physical strength towards anything in their life. And so if you ask me, hey, do you choose to eat this way? Actually, let, let me hear what you guys say. Yeah. Um, there will be consequences, just like, I guess time off of video games or some of the fun things uh, if we don't eat organs. But um, <laughs> it's worth it because there's all the yeah. nutrition. But the thing about what Chris is asking, like, remember, we made y'all do the fucking workout at the Met. We make you guys cold plunge. We, it's more than eating. Think about the workouts you do every single day. Think about the things that, that the, the, the thermal pressures, the hot, the cold, all that striker. What, what would you say back? Do we make you do that? Well, a lot of it, uh, we do get paid. So like for working out, maybe we get paid for like being professional athletes, getting in the cold, we do get paid for that. Uh, but for like the workout, some of the videos, it's just like, I guess it's us just being there to be in the videos and that basically what we got to do we are getting paid a little bit now too getting paid is a good incentive though right i mean if you're a kid yeah like you know we can either pay for fucking health insurance or i can pay them a dollar a day for a workout and then, if, and, then, and then if they make a smart investment at the end of the month i'll double it for them yeah, that's you know and they also understand they these guys love vacation like we're, we're about to go in in four four days yeah you know, th this is one of the nicest places in the world. And they get to hop on a private fucking jet. They get to stay on a mansion, a 10,000 square foot mansion with a lazy river that goes between it right on the fucking ocean. They have a 24 seven butler that's right outside our house. What do you guys tell them at, at 11 o'clock every day? Oh, uh, can we get sushi at 12? 12 rolls. <laughs> 12 rolls. So what they, what they also understand is being involved 
with doing this workout at the Met, helping to create and curate real value in the world. You know, people pay for value and they pay for it with money, time or both. And if they can help us create this kind of value, um, because I think this is one of the things that really differentiates, you know, Liver King is, is um, I'm a family man. I mean, this is the most important thing in my life. This, what we do at dinner table, I prepare for this meeting every day. This is my fucking most important meeting of the day. This is my board meeting. Mm. You know, this is my undivided attention with my family. And so to be able to share that with them, you guys, if you like these vacations, you better fucking earn them too. And they, because sometimes they'll come in and be like, hey, it's Christmas. Do I got to fucking work out today? <laughs> and what do I tell you? Um, well, if you don't, you won't get paid for a month. You don't fucking get paid. <laughs> You don't get paid, but, but uh -huh. you know what I really try to teach them, and I, and I hope that this resonates with you guys, is um, if you're already relaxing and you go on vacation, there's no juxtaposition, the, the terrain is the same. Did you really go on vacation? But, but if you're really working hard and you're digging yourself into a hole and you know what it is like to go on vacation and to really live that luxurious experience, you can appreciate it, you love it, and you're grateful for it, right? Yeah. You know, because yeah. most of the people they're on vacation, guess what? They were already fucking on vacation. Yeah. They're still on vacation. And they come home and they're still on fucking vacation. Yeah, so I actually take ownership over this. I'm like, I'm okay with you asking that question. I will force them to live this way. But along the way, I know that they appreciate what they're doing. They're grateful uh, for, for when they get food that they love to eat, when they don't have to work out twice a day. You know, they don't have to get in the cold plunge. I, I know that they appreciate yeah. that. But I know when they're awesome. older, they're really gonna appreciate it too. Mm. You guys know what's crazy is, is uh, I get DMs from young kids mm. that, that say that, that like the nicest things about me. You know, and, and, and like this is like a, a, a real, I remember the first time I saw them, I remember telling them like, hey, you guys should fucking appreciate me more because <laughs> these kids appreciate me. And uh, you know, when you know that you're influencing these young kids, these 14, 15 year old kids, <laughs> Like, what you do takes on a whole new meaning. Mm. Like, yeah. you know, you, you better be better at it. You better get your kids involved. You better lead, by example. They're missing something. I think, like, subconsciously, they're, they, they're missing something, boys, today. You know, they, they don't work hard. They only just play video games. Like, I don't know. It's just, I bet you, so they, they, they look at me like, I want to be like that. But what do I do to be like that? And we're hardwired for this. You know, men are hardwired. For this, but again, you remember along the way, like being well, civilized. Well, video game just desensitizes you and puts out. It does put out a version of yourself, but you're not able to actually. You're not expressing it yeah. physically. You're just doing right. it through a game. Yeah. And so then, therefore, you don't think you need to do it because it's simulated in your brain already. It's like the virtual. That's wild. Glasses. We would never let these. I think put it's these on. like I think. Ever. I like video games. I enjoy them. I think they're. I think they can be great, but. I think it, there also could be a big reason for like the school shootings and things like that. Mm -hmm. There's just no, there's just no perception of anything wrapped around it, no consequence. Yeah. And even just doing stuff online, everyone's anonymous, so you can just yeah. say I hate the liver king, or I could say whatever. I could say something thing. really vulgar, or really violent, and there's Get no, away with it. there's no recourse of, of anything. I mean, somebody blocks you. I mean, like, that's about yeah. it. But like, you could kind of do anything. Right. How old are you, Mark? Forty-five. Same, okay. I think the same age. Yeah. Right? yeah. So here's the thing. When I was growing up, you know, the video games had cords into the console. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you would play Madden, and you have like three plays you could choose from. Mm -hmm. And you could see what your fucking idiot friend was doing right here anyways. Copy and it, yeah. You might play for, for 20 or 30 minutes, but then you're going outside and throwing the football. Then you're playing real football. Right. You know, and then you're going, I don't know if you, if you had NBA jams. I remember NBA jams came out, and... He's heating up, yeah. you know, and, and so now we're going to the basketball court for hours. Yep. Yeah. Because the video games weren't that good. It didn't do it for you. No it didn't way. get you all the way there. Well, now probably. the video games have every guy that ever played basketball in it, right? Like it's got. <laughs> but imagine you're different in a video level, game right? and you can build your own world. You know, you, some of these games you can like build a house or build yeah. whatever. You can, you can literally. Yeah. There's no limitations to anything. Yeah. yeah. So once you get off, again, I'm not like against video games. I think that they can be. I just think probably something needs to be done with them. You can't have like no limitations on it. Yeah. I know this is going to sound a little bit idiotic, but I, I've always said, you know, like, um, there's this perception that I'm against technology. You know, but like technology is, is like percussion. Why does Liver King live in a house? People say stupid shit like that. I mean, for real. You know, and, we should shoot like, a video outside. She'd just be like laying in your front lawn. <laughs> so, like, he actually doesn't live in a house, his wife lives in there. 
I like that. He's living the code. He's right here. <laughs> He's on the ground right here. But, but you know, um, I've told this story before, but technology is what the evolutionary hunter did. Right. Right. I mean, he took the rock. There's percussion technology. Shaped it into a blade. Making fire at will. Um, and, and so social media is technology. And, and by virtue of its definition, technology is a utility in some way, shape, or form. And so even using social media as a utility is there. So technology is useful and beneficial to the species until it's not. And so what I mean by that is like with social, I, I use social to create and to curate value. But once you start mindlessly consuming shit, that's to your detriment, right? You, you think you're gonna follow four fucking hundred <clears throat> people or 4,000 people? Mm. You know, like I follow four, five or six accounts. <laughs> and, and again, like I either curate or, and I'm not saying everybody needs to do that, but I know my library is full. If I'm adding somebody to that, it means I'm taking somebody else off of it. You know, but this is the whole deal with like, uh, uh, with Wi-Fi. You know what, I do use some Wi-Fi. You know, and we, we don't have a Wi-Fi router, but I turn my computer into a hotspot so I can download something from my phone, and then I turn it off, right? And so again, it's like, um, most of these things have consequences, and I'm sure that there's some benefit to, play, to having endless, infinite creativity inside of a fucking game, but now you better fucking take that into the real world to expand your living, right? How can you integrate that into now your every, everyday living? Because people just aren't working hard anymore. There used to be a cost associated with like a, your TV. You know, your TV cost thousand dollars, seven hundred bucks, five hundred bucks, whatever it costs, right? But there's also a cost that you pay to watch it. Yeah. But you, even though people can watch TV a lot and they can, you know, waste their time, there is forms of entertainment wrapped in there. Like maybe people like to watch movies. Doesn't sound like a harmful thing. But like, what is the cost of the utility of having things like Wi-Fi, where you have kind of unlimited access to so many different things? Mm. So there's a utility though, right? You, you pay water, you pay electricity. Um, those things make our lives more convenient. Uh, electricity turns on our TV. It gives us forms of entertainment, gives us comfort. The price that you pay, the exchange doesn't seem too bad. It's like, it's money uh, for something that you know exactly what you're getting. When it comes to Wi-Fi, <laughs> we don't know exactly what we're getting. When it comes to the internet, you don't know. It's like, it's mayhem. It could be used for good. It could be used for bad. There's a lot in between. And how does, how does your brain, we don't know how our brain even processes this stuff. So things are moving so fast yeah. that there's no ancestral stuff surrounding, hey, what should the rules be? Like, I know that you shouldn't be able to just to take something from me. Like, all of us at the table can agree, like, that doesn't sound right. Right? I, I have a possession, it's something I walked in with and you took it from me and we can all say like, that doesn't seem fair. Yeah. When it comes to the internet, it's like, it, there's a lot of like just mayhem, and lawlessness. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's something like, how do you equate for any of it? Like, do you completely shut down pornography? I mean, it's the United States, so there's freedom of speech. You, do you in turn try to make everyone on the internet not anonymous? Because if you do that, then maybe people are hunting each other down. Saying, I, I can't believe you said that about my wife or whatever, yeah. right? I think that's too high up in the funnel. I, I really think what you do is, is the sort of self-development stuff that you're doing. And that I'm, one of my biggest talking points is like, you know, people ask me if I'm a real king. And I'm like, I'm, I'm the only king that matters. I'm a self-made king, right? And, and when you can lead and create and shape the exact life you want to live in, when you can take that kind of responsibility, the opportunity cost of mindlessly following people, of mindlessly engaging in dumb shit on the internet, means all of a sudden you didn't create value in yourself, right? And you didn't go inside yourself to let you can really go mm -hmm. outside yourself. Um, cause yeah, we can, when you fill up your plate for yourself, you have enough of everything that you need that you don't need to go outside of that. I think this is really important. I don't know if people ask you about politics, but somebody mm -hmm. the other day, like somebody in like a very serious position asked me like my, my political um, position on, on the war, on the war. And I'm like, you're fucking asking this guy? <laughs> Cut it out. And, and you know what I said is, uh, th this is the problem, is most people don't have their own fucking lives in order in their own homes. They don't have their own household in order. They can't go out and help their own fucking neighbor, right? And you want to talk about this guy helping someone halfway across the fucking world, get your life in order. Right? When you can learn to lead your life and take some ownership, become your own fucking king, you know, and then you, and then you start to um, you know, understand that you attract your complementary opposite, right? And the value you create in, your, in yourself, you attract that in your complementary opposite. And this is, if you can teach that kind of 
mastery, that kind of um, like real self-control, I think the other things start to take care of themselves. I think people start to realize, oh, I'm not gonna spend this much mindless fucking time doing this much mindless shit because my real fulfillment comes in the progress that I make actually sharing shit with the world, create real value in the world. But because you talked about these other things, these other things are just ways to sedate ourselves. Yeah. Right, but they play on this primal thing. I mean, if you think about it, it's the reason why we're actually here on Earth is to be healthy enough, to be fertile enough, to propagate our species. And so now you have endless fucking content to go watch that shit, but not actually propagate your species. It's like, oh, they fucking got you. You know, meanwhile, you're not creating any real value in yourself. You're doing the opposite of propagating our species, right? You're not doing anything with your fucking space and time, what you're doing is watching this mindless fucking shit. The best thing we can do, I think, is, is to teach people how to take real ownership. And when you can do that, I think some of this other stuff, it's always gonna be there, you know, but, but, but when somebody realizes that you can create and shape that exact life, that kind of ownership, now everything, now every opportunity, everything you do has a cost to it. So you're gonna spend this opportunity making your life better, making other people's lives better, or you're gonna mindlessly play video games, how much time do you spend on the computer a day? Um, we, in the summer times, we do an hour each day. What about when it's not summer? Uh, on school days, then we'll do 45. What about your friends? Uh, when our friends are over, we usually just do the same amount of time. No, do your friends <laughs> spend that amount of time or more oh, or less? Um, they spend more. Paul and Evan say they spend their whole day on the computer almost. And did that hurt? another conversation, like what's reasonable, yeah. you know, like... Could we agree that it's unreasonable to be on, you know, to play a video game for eight hours on a Saturday and a Sunday? Like that we need to sense. agree on that, Mark. Right. <laughs> we need to. You know what I'm saying? Like there, there should be like an agreeable number in each household, and each household can probably choose their own. But an hour, forty-five minutes, like that sounds cool. That sounds like he's got time to do his other stuff that he needs to do. And you know what? He better fucking earn it. You know, this is what I tell him. You better earn it, and whatever you're gonna play, better be some manly shit. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. It better be some manly shit, and you better fucking earn it. And if they've done their workouts and they've done their chores, they make their own. They get up in the morning, they make breakfast, they work out, they go connect with the earth, they go look at the sun, they do the whole routine, they spend time down at the lake, you know. And and I've always said like the easiest way to let your wild version out is to get wild. They start every day by getting wild, and so by the time they start to imbibe in that, I'm okay with that. You know, I'm okay with that. And uh, some people say, well, how the fuck are you okay with that? You know what I am? Like, uh, uh, again, it's technology, and it's okay to have some, I mean, 13 and almost 16. And, and you can't have some form of just entertainment, mindless entertainment. I'm okay with it. Do you um, read your own comments and stuff on your Instagram, or you just leave that alone? You know what I do? I, re I read a lot of comments, especially the top comments. Uh, why do you ask? I'm just wondering because we like we talk about it maybe possibly being toxic to some people or I love it. You know. Yeah, I, I, you know what I love it, um, guys. <clears throat> yeah, you, you can do that. And then, uh, you guys and, 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 and how do you service. how do you embrace that? You know, you you know, um, someone asked me the other day like, what do I think about my haters and my critics, and and I really am like, how the fuck can you be a critic? when what, I, what I'm proposing is the original way of being, the original human way of being are these nine ancestral tenets. Like these aren't really my ideas, right? And, and so I talked about this earlier, but the first thing I say is, listen, you fucking had your time, you had your chance, and it didn't fucking work. Now this is my time. And what I mean by my time is because of kids like my own that deserve a decent shot at life. Like this kid Saul that ran across the bridge. I have a best friend, Ben, who was, uh, had an HSCRP over 100, he was hospitalized with intractable Crohn's disease. They wanted to do surgery. You know, there's this other primal cat that had infertility for years, couldn't have, everyone adopted an ancestral lifestyle and what was the illusion of an intractable, recalcitrant condition, even yourself, got better, got better. And so like, what kind of piece of shit am I gonna be now that I know how to get them healthy, to, for them to stay healthy, for us to optimize? You know, so like, this is my fight in the world now. So if a critic or a hater or a conventional thinker wants to talk shit, you know, I really, I really think, listen, you had your fucking time. Get the fuck out of my way now. <clears throat> and, and when you get enough of these messages where after the Logan Paul podcast, you guys, this, this is so amazing. I got this one message. I'll never forget it because then I got a flood of these messages. I fucking hated you before. And I read the messages above 
And they're all, they're all, I hope you go to fucking hell. Your kids are going to hate you. I hope your kids, you know, like horrible shit. And then you get this message that says, hey man, I, I always fucking hated you. But after actually learning more about you, what I've understood now is, is your physical appearance is your least impressive asset. It's your mind and your heart. And, and what you helped me understand is, as I really fucking hated me and I project hate back to you. And for the first time I realized all the suffer, all the hurt, the depression, the anxiety, all the shit you talk about, this is what I have, this is what I suffer from. So the first time in my life I'm gonna try and own it. And then I got tons and tons of these messages and this is what people need to know, like people that are hurting are our people too, right? These haters are probably hurting the most, they probably need to know the message the most. If we can turn them around and get them to feel what we're feeling, this kind of freedom, they're gonna be the most incredible advocate, far more effective than what I can do by myself. Yeah, so if I, if I read those comments, you know, again, it's like, um, I tell the kids about this all the time. Like, we're talking words, you know, these words are, are just fucking vibrations that go through our ear canal that goes into our brain and we assign meaning to it. We assign yeah, meaning to it. Assignment, yeah. So you think that somebody is gonna say anything that they possibly can say and I'm gonna like back down? or have a change in action, you know, to me, more than anything, it's like, oh my God, you're really fucking hurting bad. You know, and I don't ever, actually, I decided I, wanted, I don't want to say this guy's name because I don't want to promote him, uh, but, but his, his name rhymes with lame, you know, and, <laughs> and I decided, like, you think you're going to get me to help you out, to engage with you? You know, I'll, I'll take the way that he helped me early on, like, I appreciate that. In fact, you guys, I sent him a fucking private message and I appreciate what you did so much for me that I want to buy a thousand, a hundred units to, of, of whatever you're selling. I saw the screen capture. But then, and, 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 and then I wrote back to him after that, I just sent him a private DM. I said, listen, no strings attached because you have people that believe in you that can't afford to do what you're selling. And all they actually need is somebody to get behind. Uh, the, this is, I just want to say how grateful I am, you know, and, and, uh, and so this is the way I think about people like that. It's like, you know, my cortisol is probably in great fucking shape. You know, I, I don't get mad. I don't get mad at all. I mean, we, fuck, we laugh so fucking hard about it. And, but then it moves our mission forward. Like, we really got to fight for these people. Yeah, I'm okay reading the comments because uh, the comments, um, they, don't, they don't upset me. Even when you say something about my kids, even when you send CPS here. You know, and the thing is, these people are sending their kids to fucking Chick Fil A. They're playing That's eight hours of video game. I was gonna tell the CPS lady. I said, you know who you sh who should be calling? Those parents calling on themselves, <laughs> the ones that take their kids to these places or give them medication to sit quiet in school. You should have seen. She was really the pressing kids. the CPS lady. She's like, you you need to call CPS. <laughs> 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 Because this is the thing, though. Like we all know, that's not going to happen. Yeah. But but. Because for some reason that's okay. We but, saw a kid the other day running with his dad, and his dad was running at a pretty good clip, and it was like a run, run. You know, they were on like a run. They were probably going to run like this, like four mile loop that he and I were walking. Mm -hmm. And the kid was probably like between their age. You know, he's probably like fourteen or something like that. And we just thought, like, how sick is that? Like that is so cool. Like that, yeah. and the kid was running really nice too. So it's like it's not like he was a stranger to it. He he's used to it. He's probably yeah. doing it quite a bit. You know. We have a lot of people coming to our gym that bring their kids and train with their kids and stuff nowadays, which is really cool. Also, and yeah, we love that stuff. I love it too. I love it too. And and of course, like again, there's these social norms, the mainstream stuff that people are doing today. People are buying at the highest level what somebody else is selling, and this is not good for us. Right? It's not good for the relationships, it's not good for the families, it's not good for individual health. And so the second somebody sees something different, the kids are doing, by the way, you gotta feel the cold plunge. The kids are doing, you know, 34 degrees continuous cooling nice. cold plunge. Yes, once you know, a week they do it. When, and in the winter time, if there's ice in the fucking lake, they get, in, they get into the lake. How do you like the cold plunge? Um, it's pretty tough. That's all I can really say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah those degrees, tough. man. That's, that's How long do you stay in it? Oh, uh, I did 55 seconds this week. All right, That's there awesome. you go. And how long have you done? Uh, 145 is my best. There you go. <laughs> but here's the thing, this is what we we'll come a on. a shot and a half. I mean, going in that long, that yeah, temperature, and, that's no and, joke. And it's once a week. And, and they're going up in yeah. time. They're I've never done it that cold, time. so you guys got me beat. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but here's the thing, they, they drink blood with them aside. And so on the CPS report, the parents made them drink blood. The parents... <laughs> 
make them eat testicles. You know, the parents do X, Y, and make them work out and make them do all this stuff. And then, like, you ask them about it, and, uh, Brad, why, why did you drink blood with a Messiah? Because we weren't just going to miss out on doing what the other people in the tribe do. I mean, then we would just be normal people. <laughs> <laughs> we have to be above normal people's standards. There you go, that's great. <laughs> but it's, this is just wild. It's just fucking wild. The minute you do something that's against mainstream, like, the second you don't stand in line, you're, you're going to have somebody mouthing off at it and so you know again at the end of the day i think that we all know that 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 person is probably just hurting the most you did keep going back to this is what i believe this has been my experience this is what i've seen this is what works for my family this is what's working for the people that i share this message with and i think that's the compelling stuff it's like well why why is that why is that working so well for you and for everybody in the room you know there's got to be there's there's something there and it's not just that there's at least hundreds of thousands of anecdotes. You go, you start reading some of the reviews on glandulars, you can't dismiss hundreds of thousands of anecdotes. And I, there's no hyperbole with that. You know, and, and then what I always come back to is, um, listen, what people are doing right now is not working. People are hurting at the, at the most fucking pandemic level. You know, with neurological, with oncologic, with cardiac, with neurological issues. You know, like what people are doing is not working. And, and so, again, we're talking about this one, you know, ancestral tenant, eat. There's nine of them total. And, and so this is why I always say liver is king, because I, I want people to have a, a starting place. Because if you can start with one thing, again, for people that aren't already optimized, they're going to feel the liver. It's going to give them more energy, more drive. Most people feel it. And then that's a gateway. And they say, holy shit, maybe that guy that looks like an idiot's not such a fucking idiot. Maybe I should start lifting heavy shit. And it's wild. I mean, the amount of messages people start to send about how it's changed their lives. It's like, okay, we got work to do. We got to spread this yeah. at the highest level now. I mean, everywhere we go, there's all these stories. People come over to him and be like, change my life. I mean, so many. Yeah. So many stories. I view liver as being like the hard thing, you know? Like that's the... So if you can sell somebody on the hard thing, are they going to eat four ounces of liver every day? And then at night, are they going to eat a sleeve of Oreos? Probably not, because they don't want to get like robbed of that good habit that they had. They swallowed the frog first thing in the morning. They did the cold plunge. Hmm. They, maybe they don't get out in the sun that much. Maybe they're super pale, and in the morning they got out in the sun, and they did a walk, and they did like a handful. Once you do a handful of hard things, you're like, I don't want that fucking shampoo or soap or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. Have parabens and like whatever. Like I don't even know. Like I don't know what the studies say or show. But I don't want to take any risks. I just want to stay in this kind of incubate myself in this safe place. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, part of the message is sharing wins, and we're gonna go around the table. We're gonna share our wins. Uh, Striker, you want to start or Rad? Um. Well, I think I'll start. Put this on. Sure. Uh, I think my win is uh, hanging out with Striker in the pool today. We didn't really like playing the games together, but we were kind of just talking to each other. And Striker was setting up like stuff with the hose, and sometimes we would just splash water at each other and get a little mad at each other. And um, real mad or fake mad? Just kind of fake mad. And then um, there was like a little bit of rain, and then we liked that. We were kind of mad that the rain stopped after five minutes. And, uh, it was fun. So you had a good day, bonding with your brother, and yeah. fighting with him, and. You're getting sun. There's at least three right. of the ancestral tenants, right? Yeah. yeah. Remember that you said in a message, we'll change each other's life forever. Do you remember that? Yeah. And like, I knew it. I knew you were right. <laughs> I knew you were right. There, um, actually, there are um, CrossFit coach. Like sure. I told Marco today that uh, the Bell Brothers are coming. He was like, oh, What's your win, Smelly? Who's going to be here? He was like, <laughs> He's uh, out. Oh, Marco had. Like, we we got to have his win. Yeah, He's we got to go with it. Victory is mine, once again. Well, I think I'm losing a little bit. Look, I got a microphone that's got no thing attached to it. <laughs> no, not, but uh, my, my victory, my win for today, you know, I think, uh, I guess on like a, uh, like an easy victory for today was just, just getting here, you know? Like, it's, it's a thing to like get here, you know, when you have a family and you, you know, are trying to arrange stuff, and we were going back and forth yeah. a bunch. So, uh, even though that's not like a huge struggle, it's a victory to be able to spend time here and be able to eat with you guys. And just, I just really wanted to see 
there's so many comments, there's so many things that are going viral with you at the moment where it's not just your own Instagram. People are reposting you. There's other Instagrams that are just straight up posting you. So there's some that are negative and there's some that are positive. We're like, hey, check, check out what this guy's doing type of stuff. And I was like, I just want to meet, I just want to meet this guy. Like I, I felt like I had to. Like I have to meet this guy. I have to figure out what's going on with this guy. I want to see like, is he like this all the time? Is he different than this? How are his kids? Are his kids being forced to eat liver? All day long? <laughs> like, what's going on? What's going on in that household? And if there was something wrong with the kids, I was going to rescue them. That was actually going to be a part of my mission today. We had a whole plan. But uh, yeah, no, it's, just, it's amazing to be here, and I wanted to meet you guys and, and see what it's like because. I'm seeing the comments coming in and I'm like, I, I'm embarrassed, really. I'm embarrassed for the fitness industry. I'm like, this is gross. Like, I don't know, like you guys have so much hate for this guy. It's, it's to me, I just think it's a lot of jealousy. This guy comes out of nowhere. He starts getting a million plus followers. It looks like you're continuing yeah. onward. Uh, who knows, maybe you'll hit the mainstream, maybe you'll be on TV or whatever might happen in the future, but, uh, I don't understand like why people feel that being negative is going to somehow drag you down or slow you down or I don't understand how they think that's helpful. Yeah. So I also don't understand like just when I see posts from other people like yes I'll clown on some of my friends and we'll mess around with those are people that I know. I don't know somebody I usually private message them and I might say hey you sound like kind of an idiot on that last thing like I've been in the industry for a while. Like, let's can we talk? Can we have a conversation about it more? And then we can just talk about it. Like, what's wrong with having a conversation? So I, I'm kind of embarrassed for the fitness industry being in it so long and being in it with a lot of other people. I'm like, I almost just wish that I could just bury my head in the sand and not be. I don't like being part of the fitness industry in that sense. I like being part of it for the same reason that you like to be part of it, and that's to help people. And you know, the thing is, uh, the fitness industry represents such a small fraction of the population that's hurting. Right. It's the smallest fraction. In fact, what I had told one of my guys who's running the Liver King company, you met him, Dom, is uh, I'm not going to do podcasts in the fitness industry, you know, because this is the smallest fraction of, of what we need to do. I said, you know what, maybe I'll do one or two, but what we really need to be thinking about are other mainstream uh, platforms, you know, because you'll, you all know the one guy that all he does are the fitness podcasts. Mm -hmm. Like, why didn't you go and do all these other podcasts? You know, we, we have an opportunity to make that kind of difference and, and focus, I think, in a place where people are a whole lot less biased, a whole lot more receptive to this conversation. And I think what ends up happening, for the most part, is you have a vocal minority that want to reframe this conversation, right? They want to talk about PEDs. They want to talk about steroids, right? And, and what I say is, listen, I'll talk to you about that. We're going to spend five to ten minutes on that. Right? Because the main thing is the main thing. What we need to do is acknowledge that people are hurting, that people have depression, anxiety, infertility, autoimmune, low energy, low fucking manhood. Let's acknowledge the real fucking problem and then let's acknowledge that there's a really simple, clear path to get better. You tell me what fucking day this other conversation is more important than that. For some reason, we've allowed this to happen all the time, the vocal minority to reframe to make their main thing the main thing. This isn't fucking happening. Yeah. yeah, this isn't fucking happening. Again, cool, let's talk about it, right? Because I think, um, I think when Joe Rogan, yeah. you know, said what he said, you know, what I thought to myself is this is dangerous. I thought this is really dangerous because when somebody has a megaphone like that, I, I believe what you're telling your followers is, hey, if you want to look like that, invariably some guys do, you got to go do that. Mm -hmm. So one of two but things is going to happen. Just like, what does the statement mean? Like regardless of whether we were you, talking about that on the way here, regardless of whether you use stuff or not, like I don't. If you if you did, like if somebody did, if somebody that he's referencing, let's say he's talking about somebody else, say he's talking about me. I've been on steroids for twenty something years. Happy happy twentieth birthday to me. Um, <laughs> I've been doing them for a pretty long time. Um, but so like let's just say he's talking about me. It just discredits everything else that you do, and steroids they don't work that way. As much as we would all, like, I would actually love if they did work that way. Yeah. That'd be kind of neat. Uh, I would be twice as big. I would be twice as ripped. It would be fantastic. He and I talk about it all the time. We wish they worked better. They work well. They, they don't can, work that great. They do. They can boost you up for sure. They can make you stronger. They can make you bigger. They can make you faster. But not on, like, TRT levels. Too. Yeah. yeah. Testosterone replacement levels are kind of a different thing. But 
Joe Rogan making that statement, I'm like, that's really weird. Like, that sounds... Like, is it possible that the, that Joe Rogan has jealousy? Yeah, like, we've what? been on there four like, times. What? And like, just, be jealous. And I have yeah. jealousy towards people, too. Like, it happens, right? Like, you just have these lapses. I've worked on reframing everything that I once knew, and I tried to clean out my closet the best I can, but I still mess up. Me, too. Yeah. I'm Me too. Human, right? I, I told her the same thing. There's a guy in the gym. There always was a guy in the gym that I, I was always jealous of. And when I was jealous of him, I had convinced myself that he's doing something, that he's cheating. <laughs> yeah. I had convinced myself of that thing. But the, so I, I stand behind what I say back because I think it's dangerous because I, I think it's a reflection of a self-limiting belief he has about himself and about what's possible in the world. And the thing is, nobody sold a fucking hundred million dollar podcast until he did it. It was yeah. impossible right. until he did it. You know, um, n nobody's defended the fucking, you know, heavyweight title five times until that guy did it, right? Until the guy does it, you know? And then again, when I get to tell my story and, and I talk about those 35 years of what I've done, that kind of stuff or that kind of depth, you don't know, he's never met a guy who's done what I've done, no fucking way, right? And then when I talk about all nine ancestral tenants, you know, that means a ton because most people are thinking about lifting and eating, but these other seven tenants express who we are, epigenetically express something, our highest and most dominant form, or our fucking lowest and most pathetic fucking form, and can counteract and can contradict as much as you lift and eat. You got these other forces pulling against you. And so, you know, what, what, what I thought, um, I hope, I pray to God I have the opportunity to talk with him, to set the record straight. You will. And, 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 That's where you're going next. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Hey, you'll be on Joe Rogan's show. Yeah. And, and, and this is, go ahead. I like, um, how you said before, how come the, the obese guy doesn't get, doesn't get, you know, the attention, hey, what are you doing? You know, it's like the fit people are getting the attention. It's fiction. Yes. Yeah. And like <laughs> I've never skinny. heard that before. Yeah. I use that all the time. I, I've been, uh, you know, <laughs> we've gotten that our whole lives. Like people are like, why do you work out so much? Yes. So like, how yeah. did you say it? You know, like the fact I don't know if you've heard me say this. I think I said it to Paul. It's just, you know, how does a lean, ripped, healthy fucking guy have to justify his level of fitness when this fat, yes. obese, metabolically deranged, or what happens a lot is you see a fragile, skinny, osteopathically deranged guy. Nobody asks them shit. Yes. You don't, they don't have to justify their lack of fitness, but we're carrying the burden for those guys. You know, but the truth is they're carrying the fucking heaviest burden for themselves because they're sick, because they're vulnerable, because they don't have the strength to carry their own weight or somebody else's weight when somebody in the family needs them. When they get in an accident, a car accident, what's the chance that they can load the kind of weight that somebody who is fit can load, right? You see big people walk from accidents more often than you do. You, you see, you know, skinny people walk from accidents. Yeah. But this is kind of why, like, I, I want to make sure... Um, you know, just to acknowledge the fitness industry is a small fraction of the population. And they're already on this path, at least to taking some action to becoming better. I think what's mostly wrong with the rest of the population is like there's no action being taken, right? And, and, and this is the, I think, population that I need to reach. And, and I'm okay with people, again, trying to be critics or hating, because at the end of the day, what I'm trying to do is advance the message of our early ancestors. You know, and, and then eat, again, is just one of the nine ancestral tenants. And I tell everybody, go on a hunt. Go to your butcher. Go to your farmer's market. You're not going to do any of that. Go to your fucking grocery store. Listen, if you really want to be lazy, go to White Oak Pasture. Go to Piedmont fucking Teas. Go order it online. And if you're not even going to do that, guess what? You still got to get it some way, shape, or form. There's a capsule for you. You got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. And so I'm, I'm excited about what's ahead of us. I appreciate everything that you said. I appreciate the support, you know, especially reaching out to some of those, uh, so, some of those guys. I would never start a fight with those guys, you know, because I'm like, what's, who's it going to benefit yeah, right. to start a fight with those guys? And the truth is, like, it, it, there, there's not an emotion in me that's like, um, it doesn't upset me. You know, it doesn't upset me. Um, you know what? I will admit, after uh, this one guy, like, spent a whole week talking shit, after a whole week... I, I, told my, I told my team, I said, hey, I think I might have a comment back. And, and my team was like, hey, you're better than that. And I'm like, you're right, I'm fucking better than that. There's one time, though, one time somebody got me, I was doing uh, this more. Have you ever done a uh, strict press for max? Okay, so I'm doing uh, like uh, adding 15 pounds, 15 pounds. And then, um, and then I got up to 245, did a strict press, you know, threw it, and more. That's, I have this more series. And then all these guys started making these duets. 
Do you guys know about this? What's, what's that? What's like they have me lifting, saying more, and then they're right there in the same video mm. doing the same thing. And, and people are doing like 215, and they're, they're saying all I had on there was 185. Because this is the thing, like people ask me all the time, how much weight do you lift? And I always say, this is the wrong question, right? Like, did I lift enough weight to put myself in a winning fucking mindset? Is this a new PR for me? Did it create enough of a stimulus to create an adaptation, to create neural patterning for me to get better, right? For me to live this way of life, that's the right question. And my answer to that is a resounding, fuck yeah, I did. Don't fucking worry about the amount of weight because all you're doing is comparing yourself. Don't worry about the weight. So even though I say that, after all these duets, oh my God. So I, I didn't make an actual like real, but I made a story. I made a story and I, had, and, and I showed the weight and, uh, and then somebody said, oh, somebody really must have made you mad. And it's true. <laughs> it's true. Somebody got you. Oh, they got me good. But that's okay. That was just it. If that's what got you, that's fine. Yeah. He's, he's really good with you. Like, whatever. Yeah, normally it's like, I mean, I got to... I got a family to be around. I got a wife to love. I got an actual job to do. And I know that you guys know you have a certain amount of horsepower, a certain amount of focus that you can give to your opportunities, create in the world. You're going to let some asshole sitting on the couch and force you to react to that? That takes you away from your superpower. How about you, Chris? Can you, can, would you mind sharing your win? Well, I would say it's kind of the same as Mark, like coming here and meeting you. And um, I would say you're kind of exactly what I thought. Like, uh, in, you know, to be honest, like in the beginning of, of watching all your stuff, I was like kind of against it too because we were doing like carnivore diet and whatever, like, ah, whatever, this liver guy is eating raw liver. It's like, to me, I'm looking at it from an outsider and not ever meeting you or knowing you, this is a gimmick. This is like whatever. Like, we, we know, yeah, we know Paul. He does all that shit too. And like, you know, he's nowhere near as jacked as this guy. So, of course, like, he's on steroids and Paul's not. And, you know, whatever. Like, all these thoughts, right? Yeah. And then when you were on like the Logan Paul thing, I literally left the gym, went and bought liver again, wow. and started back on it. And so the past like couple weeks, I've been back on you know the, the train pretty hard as far as like everything goes. But it wasn't just it wasn't just eating liver. It was like eating liver, lifting more, training harder, walking more, getting more sun, trying yes. to sleep better. It was it was all these things that you say that I was like trying to improve. So for, for me, it's been like a major turnaround even like in my own head of like, well, why, like, not that I was mad at you or like I wouldn't use like the word mad or hate or anything like that, but it was like, I, would, I was like sort of like disregarding it. Yeah. Like why would you disregard this when this could well, be like, also one thing that could lead to your health? Yeah. We did, yeah. we did mess with it before, but we only messed with it. We didn't like do it long enough. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. I think, that's a tendency for he and I. Sometimes we get excited about something and then we do it, but it's like our expectations, we're so excited, our expectations are way too high for whatever thing it is that we're about to do. And yeah. it's just a small tip because we already do a lot of other things where we're pretty locked in. And so we're just like, fuck this liver stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that, you know, yeah. because again, like for so many people, if they can just do that one thing, if they can start liver, it's a gateway. They start to feel it. You know, and, and um, when people are really optimized, it's, you guys are much more challenging to try and sell that to, right. you know. But, um, but out of all the nine ancestral tenants, sleep, eat, move, shield, connect, cold, sun, fight, and bond. Like, if you start with sleep, um, do you get early morning sun every day? Yeah. You do? And then what about when you finish your last meal? How often do you, uh, or how many hours before going to sleep? That is something that I had to work on a bunch. But usually after the big meal, I'll usually have like a shake or something, maybe about an hour after dinner. I have about two hours before I go to bed. So you're still, you're probably digested pretty good yeah, at, at that point. And what about your exposure to blue lights and artificial lights before going to bed? I usually either shut some of that down or I have like those weird nice. goggle yeah. glasses. Or good. Whatever. People overestimate what they can do in six months, but underestimate what they can do in five years, 10 years, 35 fucking years. You get to work, you stay at work. And you know how many men can't do a single push-up to save their own, to, to do a pull-up? You know how many men can't do a single pull-up to save their own life? There's a lot. I didn't know that. And then what if they had to do a pull-up to save somebody else's life, their own child's life, and they can't do a pull-up? This is why I say, what kind of man can you call yourself if you can't carry your own weight, if you can't carry somebody else's weight? But you can change that right now.
Go get to fucking work. Change it right now. This is the philosophy, right? The Roman chest plate, the body armor from head to toe, right? This is building biological resilience because one day you will need the strength. And you're going to say, thank fucking God I put in the work and I was ready for this. But thank you for doing that. You guys, you guys did good. Hopefully it rains again. More pressure since I'm in front of the camera. Yeah. All right, um, what up primals? This is the day that we get prepared to get kicked in the chest, punched in the chest, or shot in the chest. So we start working on that Roman chest plate. We get ready for life, for the unexpected events we call life. To prepare to load, to mechanically load up. Because one day you might need the strength to save somebody else's life, to save your own life, to save a child's life, or maybe even your own child's life. What kind of man can you call yourself if you can't pull your own weight or if you can't pull somebody else's weight? So go get in the gym. Go do some push-ups. Go do some pull-ups. Go get ready for life. Go in that shit Liver King out. Awesome. Yeah, boy! Yeah, boy! Yeah, boy. If I step out my driveway on foot, cars stop. Cars stop and it's like, it just feels like more. And, and like I said, all I care about is, you know what, like the message is getting out. But some people have the fucking audacity to drive on the property and say, hey, man, can I get a picture? And I say, get yeah, the fuck out of here. Yeah, that's number, one. number one, get the fuck out of here. And then sometimes it's like a, a delivery driver. And he says the same thing. Hey, man, can I get a picture? And I say the same thing. Listen, you're on my fucking property. Right. Get the fuck out of here. But remember, liver is king. Mm -hmm. you know? And here's a testicle on your way out the door. <laughs> but here's the deal. If I step one fucking foot outside, then I feel like this is my invitation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If I'm one foot outside, I say, get the fuck over here. Let's do this. And then some people are so fucking lazy. We were at Jeep Week. Oh, and, yeah. and, and Jeep Week was good. Like, there was a lot of people, just great fucking energy. And coming up and wanting to do pictures. And every everyone, I'm like, okay, why is my name Liver King? You don't know? If, oh, you do know because liver is king. Let's fucking take a picture. Right. You need to know. And you need to start eating liver. Look at the fucking, look at you guys. You're in your early 20s. Look at how you fucking look, right? If you expect to attract your complimentary opposite, how the fuck can you expect her to look like a fucking 10 when you're a five? Mm. Get to fucking work, man. <laughs> if you remember nothing about this, eat liver, get to fucking work, and then start learning about some of these other things. Okay, move on, move on. But then this one guy, um, he goes, hey man, can I get a picture? And I said, yeah, fuck yeah. And then he, go, he says it again. Hey man, and I, I said, get the fuck over here. He didn't want to get out of his fucking truck. Mm. He wanted me to come to him. And I said, Being listen, lazy. I said, listen, I didn't ask for a picture with you. You asked for a picture with me. Right. I don't need a picture with you. The fucking guy left like he was offended or something.